When it's time to relink your images, you can expand the little drop down on your pictures. And if you select one image at a time, you can relink one at a time. You could also select the actual grouping. And so assignment on d.tiff in this example, if I don't expand it and I just click on it, um, if I was to relink it right now, it would relink both of those pictures. As a general rule, you want to double check each one to make sure you are relinking the right image. Maybe somebody placed the wrong image and it's not supposed to be used twice. But if you're confident and you know that it's supposed to be the same image twice, you don't have to do it twice. You can just do it once and it will replace all of the instances of that picture. There are several buttons at the bottom of the links panel. If you have expanded it to show the link info at the bottom half, then it's halfway in between the top and the bottom. But if your panel is compressed, it will be at the very bottom. There's actually more buttons um, than I'm showing, but I really don't want you to use a little cloud relink one because it's not a requirement for the class. You're going to use the red circle and the relink button. And so you're going to select the picture. In this case, assignment one A dot tip is selected. You can select the relink button and then you can find on your computer wherever the image is saved. Now, right now, I don't have to fix assignment one because it's not broken. But what if I wanted to replace it? What if I look at the image in this example, it's a tiger. What if I look at the image of the tiger and I say, I don't want to use that image. I have a better image of a tiger. I don't have to delete the picture and then place in InDesign, you place images. Um, I don't have to place or insert a new image. I could just say, well, replace this image with a new image and I could relink it. But instead of linking it to the original image, I'll say link it to a new image. And so that's another way to use that. You can also use the go to selected link option. That's the same as double clicking or clicking on the little number one here. You can update a link, which is if you have a yellow caution or yield sign here saying that you have a modified link, you can update it, but you can also just double click on the little triangle. And then one of the things that you may want to start using, um, you don't have to do it now, you don't even have to do it until module six, is you can choose edit link with. And so if you are looking at the image of the tiger and all the other images are grayscale, but that image is sepia tone, you could select it and you could choose edit with and choose Photoshop. You could make your changes in Photoshop and hit save and quit out of Photoshop. And when you come back to InDesign, it'll automatically be uploaded. I don't really like the button though. I like to hit the little option fly out menu in the top right hand corner right here. I don't know if you can see where my cursor is spinning. If you hit that, you get a fly out menu and then you can choose edit link with and then you can you have more options of what you can edit with if you do it that way. Once you pre-flight, you're going to package your project. And so do not package your project unless your pre-flight has a green circle on it. So your pre-flight panel or the little icon in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, they both are showing you the same option. As long as you have a green circle, you can feel pretty confident about packaging your project. Now I did say that there are manual pre-flight things that you have to double check, but at this point we're not doing that because we haven't learned them yet. But if you have a green circle, you should feel somewhat confident that you have everything you need to package the project. And so to package, once you have that green thumbs up or that green circle, um, is really as simple as choosing the file menu and then towards the bottom choose package. And InDesign will walk you through the process of packaging. And what it will do is it will create a copy of everything that you need for your project. And so right now you're working on your computer and you might have files saved every which direction and you have things saved for particular reasons on your, pro on your, on your computer. But when you choose package, it's going to make a new folder and inside that folder, it's going to make a duplicate or a copy of everything you would need to recreate that project. When you choose file package, you will get a package dialog box that has tabs on the left hand side. And we are concerned with the first four. We're not too concerned with the last two for now. Um, but basically, if you have that green thumbs up or that green circle on your preflight panel or the bottom left hand corner of your workspace, you basically can just acknowledge these things and hit package. But you should be double checking them. And so the first tab is the summary tab. You can't change anything on here. You can just acknowledge it. And so it tells me there's four fonts used. There's zero missing, zero embedded, zero incomplete, zero protected. Um, if I don't think that I'm using four fonts, if I think I'm using one, that's kind of a red flag to me, so I'd make a note of that. It tells me I have links. It tells me what colors I'm using and things like that. The second tab, so we're, we're really concerned with tabs two, three, and four. The second tab lists all the fonts I'm using in my project. And so I'm going to look at this and I'm going to acknowledge that they're there. I have four fonts, Minion Pro, OCR, etc. 
if I don't think I'm using these fonts, I need to hit cancel and I need to go remove them from my project. And there are other ways to do that, like you can hit find font and you can replace fonts. We're not that advanced yet, so right for right now you're just going to acknowledge I'm supposed to have four fonts but I only have two, or I'm supposed to have two fonts and I have four, and if they don't match you need to hit cancel and fix that before you package. It also tells you what type of fonts they are. The status is what you're really concerned with, and so if for some reason that you had a missing font issue that you haven't fixed, it would say missing. It would say you can't you can't create a package folder. It's not going to put Minion Pro Regular in your package because it's missing. And if a font or a picture, a link is missing, it won't it won't move forward into your package, which means whoever you give the file to won't receive the assets they need to be able to create the project. The third tab are the links and the images tabs. Links don't have to be pictures, but for us right now they are uh, pictures. On the left hand side it tells us the name of the file. It tells us the type. It's a JPEG and an RGB. If I think I have to have a TIFF and a CMYK image, then I would say, oh, this is not right, and I would hit cancel and go fix it. The status right now is missing. See how I, I have it missing? That means that I have a pre-flight error. I have a red stop sign somewhere, and I didn't fix it. And so if that happens, hit cancel, go back, re-preflight your project, and fix that issue. And when you package, it should always say, um, it should always say that your status is current or that it's okay or that it's present. You can, if you want to, relink the image from the relink button here in the package dialog box. I would like you not to get into the habit of doing that though. I think the, the better process is to hit cancel, make it right first, and when you package, you should just be acknowledging that these things are correct. The third tab are the color and the inks tab, and it will tell you what colors you will be printing or what colors your images are made from. And in general, if you're printing something, it should be cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you saw RGB on here, it means you have images prepped for um, a digital output, which is neither right or wrong. It's wrong if it's, it's both right and wrong. It's wrong if you're meaning to print, but it's right if you're meaning to have a digital output. You may also see Pantone 186 or Spot Black or, or anything else down here. Those would be additional colors that you're printing with in addition to CMYK. And for project one or assignment one in this class, you will see a fifth color. There, I've added a cream color that's going to print with cream ink instead of printing with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, just so that you can see that there would be more colors listed. It's, it's called a spot color. And I know we really haven't learned about spot colors yet, but you should expect to see that, and it should be uncomfortable, and you should say, well, why is that there? And eventually you'll learn why it should be there and if it should be there. And if you're if you're packaging your own project and it's not supposed to be there, you would hit cancel. You would go to your swatches panel and you would fix that issue before you package. The last two tabs you don't have to do anything with. So the first are print settings. InDesign allows you to create preset print settings for your file. So if you want your file printed a particular way with particular settings, um, you can set that in the file so that when somebody receives it and they hit file print by default certain things will happen. Right now you don't have to do anything for our class for this. And then InDesign allows you to install plugins and that there, there are two types of plugins. There's plugins that you can transfer from person to person and there are plugins that you cannot transfer from person to person. Um, if you have used a plugin that can be transferred from person to person, it will be included on this list. And we're not going to use plugins in this class because they're not really used that often for what we're learning in this class. Once you're done, you can hit package. You will get a dialog box for printing instructions. So way back at the beginning of the lecture, I showed you a properly packaged InDesign project. Keep going here. And I said that you should have a fonts folder, a pictures or a links folder, an InDesign file, and a .txt instructions file. That .txt instructions file is going to have a series of instructions that are just built in automatically because of the settings you chose in InDesign. But in addition to that, you can fill out this form and you can include additional information in the printing instructions. It is a good idea to fill this out because your project will come back to you. And so for our class, at the very least, I want you to change the file name to your last name one, last name two, last name three, etc., depending on what project you're working on. But let's say that you are a graphic designer and you're working at a graphic design firm that has 10 graphic designers and you're all sending files to the same printer. 
how is that printer going to know if they send the files back to you or to Jessica or to Amanda or to Lauren or to Jason or Justin or Joey, right? They need to know whose files these are and who to contact if something's not right or they have any questions. And so you want to put your contact information there. You want to make sure that if they have questions, they come back to you and they ask you the questions. You can also put instructions in the instructions line here. And so I said, please contact me before making proof. I've set die lines and I'd like to make sure that that I'm communicating what I'm supposed to be communicating with those die lines. You can't see because you can actually type more on that line than you can see. And so you can put instructions on there or questions and, and you can, can hopefully prevent errors from occurring by saying, hey, here's a heads up. I did this because of that. And if you have a good pre-flight person or a good uh, pre-press person at your printing company, they're going to be reading those instructions before they do anything. When you're done, you're going to hit continue. If you have not saved your project, it's going to tell you you have to save your project before you package. And that's okay. Just hit okay and save the project. You'll then have to decide where you want your package folder to go. And again, expand the dialog box whenever you save something so that you can see the name that you're going to choose. And it says my new project. Obviously, don't use that. Use like your last name one, last name two, or something descriptive. You can choose where it's going to save. I am kind of non-traditional. I like to save everything to my desktop. And then once I'm done and I'm 100% sure something's finished, then I'll organize it and I'll put it where I want to store it on my computer. And so in this example, I'm going to toss the new package folder on my desktop. Now this screenshot is a little out of date and I probably should have replaced it and I apologize for not doing it. But the bottom half of the panel here, it has six options. There are actually eight options in the newest version of InDesign. But you're still going to choose the same options. You want to choose the first three and you don't need to choose the last three. Um, the first three will copy your fonts, they will copy your graphics to make the document fonts and links folder. And then the third one is like the most important here, it will update the links in your package. And so when you create your project, you are linking to files on your computer and they are in a very specific location. But when you create a package project, you are moving those files into the package folder. And so you want to tell InDesign, look in the package folder for those files don't keep looking on my computer because if I hand those, if I hand that package to somebody who's going to work on a different computer, it'll still be looking for the files on my original computer and then that just doesn't work out so well. The last three don't really matter either way. You can select them if you want to. Um, one, or I guess let's call it four. Four is to use document hyphenation exceptions. So you don't know how to set those yet, so you can choose it or not choose it, but you're not using document hyphenation exceptions. Number five is to include fonts and links from hidden and non-printing content. You don't know how to create hidden and non-printing content yet, so you could check it or not check it. It's not going to do anything. And if you choose number six, it will view the report, meaning it will show you the, the file that was created for your printing instructions. I find that annoying because I know what I typed, so I do not check that box. The other two options that appeared starting in CS6 are the ability to create a PDF I do not want you to choose that setting because when you create a PDF, it's going to be a generic PDF and it doesn't allow you to make choices about the PDF. So I'd rather you choose file export and export your own copy of the PDF. And then the last option, which I do want you to select, is to include a .idml file, an InDesign markup language file, and that creates uh, an extra file in your package that, that will allow anybody CS4 or newer to open your project. So if I only have CS6 and you send me a package project from um, InDesign CC 2017, I literally will not be able to open your INDD file. I'll get an error, I'll go back to you, and I'll say I can't open it. But if you send me a .idml file, even though I can't open your INDD from CC 2017, I can open an IDML file and I can work from that.